good afternoon and welcome to Stitches and Jacks. Welcome, welcome, welcome all. <laughs> How lovely to be with you again and to share your company. Um, I'm just looking outside, we've got some scaffolding that's just put up, been put up. And well, I say put up in the last, what, 10, might even be the two weeks, um, having the house painted. And my husband's doing it. <laughs> No, it's fine. It's fine. So yeah, so welcome. Welcome to all of you. Um, been a little while since I've been with you. Um, just been busy with the summer um, childcare for grandchildren and had some, yeah, day out at the beach, which was really nice. Perfect for me because it wasn't too, too hot or too cold. It was just right enough so that I could have my jacket on, I think. And that's what I prefer. Don't like the sand in my, in my feet, between my toes. So we've done that. What else have we done? Um, you know, we just had some, we've had like a regular day with, with the boys, which has been uh, really nice during some holidays. So we've just done sort of grandparents stuff, gardening, painting, playing games, hanging out. Um, we had family up over the August bank holiday. So I think I've recovered now. Oh my word, we, we've we always tended to be a house where everybody comes to us <laughs> and we do the entertaining and I absolutely love it. But I think it's been so long now. Um, we had our stepson come up from Hampshire. We haven't physically seen him or been able to touch him <laughs> since December 2019. So long time, a long time. Um, obviously, he's um, yeah, beautiful, <laughs> beautiful partner. Um, where they're both expecting their first child, first child together, um, first child each of them. <laughs> the words all twisted, twisted. Then, um, so we're buying the pram. So we did pram shopping, and we went into Liverpool. That's the biggest town to us. Now, weird. What a weird experience that was. Weird's nice, but weird in the sense that we're not used to going out and being with people. So that was the same for our son and um, girlfriend. Had our mask on, sanitised and did everything you know, that we should do, stuck to the restrictions and everything. And we felt safe at all times. And we had a lovely day, lovely day. But I don't think also prior to COVID, I don't think we shop like we used to. Um, we shop so much online now. It's so much more convenient. Um, yeah, lovely day. Liverpool's beautiful, beautiful. If you ever get a chance to go and visit the city, it's well worth a trip, well worth a trip. Um, lots of history um, in Liverpool, so lovely. And then my daughter came the next day, my eldest daughter with her little one, and he is, he's not a lockdown baby, but he's certainly, well, he certainly, we can see that he has, as a result of COVID, is not used to lots of people and he's only used to going to, obviously being in his parents' house, his house, his house, um, and go, come into my house on a, thir on a Thursday and his other um, nana's on a Friday. So yeah, I, I'm not allowed to cuddle unless it's a Thursday. Um, yeah, very, very strange. But he was really good with um, with our son. Um, re really good. I don't think he got a cuddle, but he was quite happy to be in spoken to, being near. Um, so which was which was funny. But no, lovely. But yeah, I just wasn't used to. I think the volume of the noise. Um, can't say that cooking. Don't think we did cooking. We ate out um, lunch on the Friday, Saturday. Oh, yes, we went to the Black Sheep Walls on the Saturday, took my, I call her my daughter-in-law, because that's how I regard her, I regard her as my third, third daughter. So we took her to Black Sheep Walls. She isn't a knitter. She can knit a little bit, but she's determined to knit something for the, um, for the baby. She absolutely loved um, Black Sheep Walls. She really, really enjoyed her visit there. She bought a few things. We bought a few things. Um, I think I've got some footage to show you. I've made a little cardigan for her or for her son 
for her son and I was able to gift that to her. So I've got a little bit of footage to show you, to share with you of a make and a little bit, we're making it what's called a generation blanket. But I'm digressing, I'll, I'll uh, save that little snippet for you for later. So that's all my news, I think. Oh, our middle grandson yeah, started school last week. So that was a big thing. So met him from school, seen him. He also had an operation last week. Was it last week? No, it was a week before. A week before, time goes so quick. Yeah, he started on the Thursday, went on the Friday. Wasn't able to go Monday and Tuesday because there was a gas leak in the school. Don't ask me why, but yeah, there was. So the school was closed for another, another two days. Um, but he managed to do Thursday. Oh, perhaps it was close to three days. He managed to do Thursday and Friday um, full time. So, yes, he's had a little operation on his toes, um, but that's they seem to be recovering. So he's able to go to school, but oh, his little feet are bandaged up. Bless him. He's got these, I don't know, these black plasticky sandaly things that he has to strap over. But, you know, what? kids are so resilient. He really, and he's fabulous. He really is. We call him the fabulous spread. Um, but he's getting on with that. He came here yesterday. We had him for the whole day. Um, and he was outside, an hour and a half he was, this little four year old, helping his granddad paint the fence. And then his granddad was going round after him. <laughs> it's like a continuous circle, <laughs> filling all, in all the bits that he'd missed. Um, and then I got a little bit of time too with Alfie, yeah, to myself. So, yeah, so that sort of our day's not, I wouldn't say it's overly exciting in the house, but it's just perfect. It's just how I like it or how we like we like it so yes so it feels if a bit of normality has come back into our lives so where can you find me obviously you can find me on youtube as stitches and jacks you can find me on ravelry as stitches and jacks and you can find me on instagram as stitches and jacks but what i should say is you can find me as stitches and jacks on youtube ravelry and Instagram. No, see, I've lost it. It's gone already. Gone already. So, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I hope that all of you have been okay. Um, I hope that you're still crafting. I hope that you are having a little bit more normality um, back in your life. Oh, and yes, happy autumn. Happy autumn. It is my favourite, favourite time of the year and how happy am i how happy am i not so happy with the heat wave last week I, yeah just wiped me out couldn't really do um, very much i'm not good not good in the heat but yes happy autumn it's so lovely driving into town and coming back and seeing all the fields so glorious i was um well i meant to take some pictures last week but i didn't because it was too hot and i wish i had because it's rained ever since so I have to see if I can um, get some pictures and just share uh, the beauty of nature and of our, our country. Yes, yes. So without further ado, I'm trying to find out what I've been up to these last few weeks. Yeah. So what have I been up to? I think two months ago, July, yeah, July is two months, isn't it? Blimey. Um, two months ago, I'd had a sort of cast on party of all these um, beautiful shawl designs. Two I'd finished and the third one, the Humblebee shawl by Fibre Tales, I was still working on. I think I'd put them to one side because I was finishing those two shawls. And I think I was working on Secret Project, which I still didn't finish um, in time. So I have now finished this show. Let's start over here. Here they are. Here are all those bees. Let me, let me go right through. Oh, I don't want to knock stuff off the sofa. Here it is. Oh my word, look how beautiful that is. This is my very first knit with using blue face. No, it isn't. I'm lying. I was about to say it's my first knit with blue face Lester, but I have used it in the past. I haven't used this colour. So I was using um, the Woolly Knits blue face Lester, and it was shade 
yeah, there we are. And it's a shade mauve. And I used whatever the recommended needles were, which I would think were 3.5. Oh, it's outside. That's so annoying, isn't it? <laughs> About 3.5, I don't think I can see and I haven't got my glasses on. Oh, this is not gonna this is not gonna go well. well that's the size needle <laughs> that I used. So it's knitted flat. Yeah, I think that's 3.5. Knitted flat. So I just had it on a circular needle. Um, yeah, I think it was it was easy. It was easy. I I think an advanced beginner would be able to do this. She has a little um, video on her website to oh, here it is. Sorry, brought in. That's all, oh no, it's four millimeter needles. Sorry. Um, in five tails, she has little video on her website to show you how to make the bees. So I did my swatch like a good girl. So that's my little swatch of my bee, which I think I showed you last time. So I managed to do that. I It was a Pico cast on, Pico cast on. So I just put a stitch marker by each one just so that it made it easier for me for, let me just move that because I'm going to keep knocking it. Um, just, yeah, just ease of counting. So you've got the Pico cast on, garter stitch, and I think these look like these little, uh, can you see the um, little garter pieces here? I think they look like the original beehives, and I know there's a proper name, but I don't know what it is. If you know, <laughs> if you know, leave me a comment down below and you can, and you can tell me, but it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. That's quite a lot of work. It's, it's painful patterns. I can't see how many stitches, but a lot of stitches. But you get to about here, and then you just sort of it just whizzes by, and you finish it. There's a different cast off um, to what I have ever done before. And I was reading it, thinking, "Oh my word, this is um, that's wrong. It's not gonna that's not gonna lay flat." Oh, I don't know. I think this is wrong. Um, but do you know what? This is why I'm a knitter and not a designer, because the designer knows what they're doing. Um, and the finished me measurements are the wingspan is 160 centimeters 63 inches and the spine is 60 centimeters 23 and a half inches and I'm more or less bang on um, the yarn that I used is supposed to use um, Blueface Leicester or Masson D DK so I used the Blue face Leicester, and you said about two and a half skeins. You'll need about six hundred meters to six hundred and fifty-six yards. So I had on here. I'll put my notes so that I wouldn't forget anything. Oh, and my notes. I've written it down here. Oh, I've written it down somewhere. But I used three. And mine's 500 gram balls so I've used six about six and a half so that's three so it would be 300 grams plus a bit more but I think my yardage was different um, but I, I, I had plenty so yeah so I'm really happy with this and I think this is gonna be a gift <laughs> I just love it I love I love the spine I love the bees the flowers I think that gives that um, an extra element. So you're really, really, really pleased with that. And once you get to this point, with it just being garter stitch, you can just do that in front of in front of the telly, really. So, yeah. So ten out of ten for that um, that pattern. There was one issue with the pattern, which I will say, with the spine, there was an abbreviation which was left off, and. I don't know whether it has been amended. I know there's been an amendment on the pattern to increase the size of the shawl. I noticed that today. But she tells you what the abbreviation is in the pattern. But if you go and um, look it up, you'll, you'll, fi you'll find it. So that was my first finished object. Oops. 
if whips if I'm in a different position it's because I just kicked the tripod so I do apologize but you probably not noticed till I've mentioned it so whips I think I shared with you when we were together um, last time that I wanted to take part in the anchors make along that is being hosted by Fibre Tales podcast and this Danny Knits podcast and I'm trying to be I'm trying to be really mindful and use as much of my stash as I possibly can I keep going on don't I I keep talking about my stash but I think it's important it's important to me and it's part of my journey and whereas I were when I first got back into my knitting there was a lot of impulse buying and especially if I you know the feeling when you have when you see a bargain when you see something's been knocked down yourself you think, oh, buy that and I'll use it for something there was a lot of that always with the boys in mind but um I have this is the first yes this is the first garment that I've taken from my no it isn't I've had another line <laughs> this is the second um garment quantity I've taken from my stash I bought it originally with jumpers in mind for the boys um this is a dk so that's what i was um looking at and i thought yeah i really like that cardigan quite fancy an easy cardigan over a pair of jeans i've got into wearing jeans in the last couple of years or jeggings i think they're called i don't do zips that's why i didn't tend to really wear trousers um, i don't mind zips on the side the zips on the front i don't like for me <laughs> So I was showing you, yes, I think I was sharing with you, wasn't I, my different um, yarns that I had in the Adrafil, the Italian um, yarn that I had, that I bought in the sale for a pound a ball. So I chose this one and it's beautiful. <gasps> I forgot my swatch, just bear with me. So my swatch, you didn't see me go, did you? <laughs> so this is my swatch. Look at those colours. How beautiful are those colours in that swatch? So becoming a lot more confident in creating a swatch, in blocking it and pinning it out and measuring it before I've blocked, before, yes, before I've soaked it and blocked it and then afterwards. So I was on the right size needle gauge so I've cast on oh, I've been so excited in my life and there we are this is how far I have got See, I have to hold it upside down it's knitted uh, it's knitted is it knitted in the round it's knitted in one needle it's, no it's, it's knitted back to back isn't it because it's cardigan it's not steaked so this is how it would be. Just making sure no, I've got it the right way around. So this is my yoke at the moment. I'm just loving. Obviously, it's not blocked. It's not finished. It won't be blocked. Um, so yeah, I can't tell you very much about it. Also, you can see it's like a one by root, one by one rib. Oh, there'll be some increases in there. So I am really happy with that and the way that's coming out. I think they are really autumnal colours. And this is 100% um, wool. So this is my second one. Now my meterage um, is slightly less on here than the yarn that Petite Knits um, recommend, which that's absolutely fine. As long as I've got enough to knit for the body, I think I can gain a little bit because I'm only five foot two, so I'll gain a couple of inches, I think, on the body. I just don't know how long the sleeves are going to be, um, but I'm quite happy if they are three quarter length um, sleeves. But we, we, will, we will see. So this is part, this is going to be my entry 
for the make along that is hosted by Fibre Tales and this Nanny Knits. And it finishes on the 9th of October. So I think I've got four weeks left um, to complete this. And the hashtag is, and I'll put it across the bottom, and it's the hashtag anchors obsessed cal. So I'm going to I'm going to do my best and um and put this in. But yeah, so that's where I am up to. With that. Oh, that looks lovely. See? <laughs> so, hey, just rocking out another cardigan. I still have my, my Dolly cardigan. I kind of chickened out the colour color work, so, and this has kind of come along. <laughs> so, yeah. Pull myself together and control myself. And the other whip that I have, I've got. I brought out two long standard whips, both of which I think I'd started this year. One was my corners corner blanket, which I'd set myself the target of working one row a day. And I think I was nearly, it's a, I think it's an Aran, the equivalent of an Aran weight. I have 800 grams, four 200 gram balls, and I was nearly at the end or three quarters of the way through my first 200 gram ball and it's just sat to one side I haven't I hadn't touched it for ages so I thought right come September I'm just going to work on it one row a day for 30 days and hopefully I'll got to the point where I'll be decreasing because I don't know about you <laughs> about you guys but I always feel that if I make a corner to corner blanket as soon as I start decreasing it's quicker it's like when you make striped socks they're quicker to knit or you feel that they're quicker to knit I don't know what it is about about that so I have more or less kept that there's been the odd day or two where I've missed it for some reason so the next day I've just done two and I'm quite a slow crocheter um so it takes me I'm on my second ball now and it's taking me over nearly half an hour about 25 minutes to work on one line so most days i have worked on it and the odd day i've had to as i say had to um make two rows which today is going to be that day because we were in, you know just involved with the boys yesterday so that's a very quick roundup of that project the other project that um I wanted to share with you was my cozy memories blanket i think i showed you last time and it was 20 i think it was 25 squares it was, it's going to be a square blanket so the arrows are going out um that way that way and obviously that way whatever whatever way i don't know so there was and i i hadn't touched it for ages and the reason i hadn't touched it was because i had two squares next to two other squares which were very similar in like creams and mustard tones so I decided in my wisdom that I would take these two squares out. I think it was my sort of patchworky quilting head that my eye just kept being drawn to these two squares. And they were going to be they were going to be in the middle of the blanket. Whereas if it was the typical one which goes off to the side, it would have perhaps moved down. Maybe I could have got away with it. But I don't want to just get away with things. Um I want to do them to my best of my ability and what I do want to be as happy with them as I can be so I was like oh, I'll undo it I'll undo it well <laughs> I really learned a lesson on this I couldn't just go back and undo a few squares I had to undo the whole blinking lot <laughs> so this is where I am up to here and that's all what I've got left <laughs> To add in, and I, I had sewn everything in, and it was all nice and neat and everything. And I've learnt a lot of lessons. I've learnt that I need to be perhaps a bit more thoughtful where I put my colour placement, and only when I am completely satisfied will I sew everything in. Um, in the sense of I really, I really. This is my pair of 
this is my this is the yarn sorry this is the yarn from the strictly socks last year and i'm really happy with that because it is surrounded on all four sides now i will sign that i will fill that in and i think that's going to be my finishing method once i'm completely happy with a square i'm going to fit i'm going to fill that in so hopefully by the next time i see you i might be able to wear a square where I was last time um but I, I am happy my daughter thinks I'm absolutely mad I'm absolutely crackers she, she would have just left it but yeah so yes that's where I'm up to so they're all in exactly the same place I think it's I come around to here and then I think those two squares were kind of here I'll still use them but I'll probably just put them on this side of the blanket so I just need to go around that and I think the idea the idea when I first started, I thought, oh, would well, it be nice to make this blanket? And then I can put a square in after I finish a project, uh, each project. And if I do it, do it as soon as I finish the project, yeah, it'll, it'll um, be, up, be up to date. What I didn't realise is that sometimes you just want to, uh, you're influenced by colour, so you're kind of going to go through maybe a blue phase or a pink phase or a mauve phase. So of course, if you do it in that order, all of them are going to be together, which would be no good, unless you wanted that colour colour blanket. So that's the saga of that. But even though I have all this, oh, I am quite happy that it's done now. And I'm quite happy that I'm up to that stage. Am I mad? Do you think I'm mad? Let me know. Let me know. That's irrit really irritating me now, my, my fringe. So I need to go and um, get that cut. I'll be no Claudia Winkerman, will I? <laughs> um, socks. Sock talk. I think I showed you a hoe last time. I shared with you a hoe, sorry. So these -da, are my socks. They don't, yeah, they don't match. <laughs> yeah, that's what's saying. <laughs> these are a pair of socks my queen's court hospice i think socks i have to check my notes this leg has <laughs> really long um these will be for well a gentleman or a lady whoever would like these these are going to be sent in as a christmas donation I think I might have started these back. Do you know what? I started these the 29th of March. So they've just been on my needles for a long, a long time. These are the Rico again. You can see that I've got them in a sale. I'm such a sucker. So yeah. So they're four ply. That's what I've got left of that. And these have been housed in my beautiful Muir Mouse bag. So I'm happy that they are going to go off to charity. I've ordered some new sock blockers. I might need you to help me there. Do you know anywhere that you can perhaps get sock blockers for size 10 to 12 feet? Um, I, I've got a bit of a thing. I was going to say foot fetish. I haven't got, I don't know. <laughs> I don't like feet in the sense of I love little baby feet. They're really cute and I don't mind little small feet. I've only got size five feet. So once you get past a size seven or six, I'm a bit like, yeah. My husband's got size 12 and they're like great big chubby baby feet. So somebody's enlarged them. <laughs> um, oh, I forgot to say, these are a vanilla pair of socks, which you'll be able to, you'll know. Um, they have a heel flap and gusset and I don't know what toe is that what toe is that where you do your decreases I don't even know what that's called um yeah you do your decreases is it called a rounded toe wedged is it called a wedge toe yeah let me know <laughs> let me know <laughs> what kind of toe that is and let me know if you know anywhere that I can purchase some sock blockers for sort of size 10 to 12 men's feet so I don't know if they are out of proportion the legs to the feet or because they're so large that that's why um so they're blocked and they're 
they are lovely I'm really, I'm really happy with those and I'm hopefully the recipients will feel the same when they receive those at Christmas <laughs> so that's those ones then I think I was I was test knitting not far how I'm not sure how far along I was on these I do find it difficult to watch myself really um I was right these are the fur cone socks I was testing these and um, these for Shannon Shannon at Blue Fern Yarns and just before I go on to waffle on about my socks I just want to make an apology to the lovely Shannon at Blue Fern Yarns because I'm always calling her Lauren I know that's not a name and I don't know why it comes out of my mouth but it just does um so Sharon I'm Shannon I did say Shannon I didn't say Sharon did I so Shannon I'm so sorry I text her after my video went up and I said I'm so sorry that I called you Lauren again and she's like it's fine it's fine don't worry about it she's so lovely so lovely to me um so the yarn I used was a blue fern yarn blue fern yarn yarn and it was the earl grey so that's the label is that gonna flow from my face oh, wait a minute. and that's the that's the label of all the details and that's how much i have left this is just beautiful absolutely beautiful and i think it's the first yarn first indie dye yarn that i've ever um i was going to say some little nibs but i don't know whether it is really nibs i think it's like a speckle a very slight speckle it's gorgeous and it smells divine and this is housed in my project bag from my lovely friend from our zoom group we were able to meet up at black sheet walls we've been talking for about a year and you know she made this gift for me and it's so beautiful and i showed her and i said i know it's too big for a sock bag but i just love it and i just really wanted that's her little label there i just wanted to be able to use it and it's so lovely so yes so going back to the socks i haven't even shown you have i that's my neck yeah can you see my wedgie toe and it has a pattern yeah on the left leg and then a pattern on the right leg pattern on the right leg oh you can see that a bit better can't you yeah this, so i i made size small that's what i was asked to do so i've done a smaller smaller size and i made these on dpns cuff down one by one rib and um a heel flap and gusset so you probably see it better on there yeah really lovely absolutely lovely so yes yeah, so um and shannon's running i think for the next year um to thank her customers she's got two hashtags one is for let me just read, read this out i don't want to get it wrong um it's hashtag blue fern yarn whip so you can enter that as long as it's no more than 25 percent completed from the first of october sorry first of august um and then when you finished it hashtag blue fern yarns fos for finished objects um any anything you make using her yarn if you just hashtag her in that so yeah really really lovely patterns really really delicate beautiful absolutely beautiful so i thoroughly enjoyed yeah making those for her and i'll add those to my collection they're also sorry they're also my july entry for the rainbow sock chronicles i think it was lilac so they are complete and i think i completed those on the last day of july or the sec or the second to last day of july so they were they're done and then what so i've shown you my blue ones haven't i 
and then oh yeah, these are my entry for the Rainbow Sock Chronicles for August and I have chosen there's my label in here as I seem to be forgetting all of my information or is it on my table outside probably on my table outside yes so this is from um Oh, crumbs. Um, stranded Dye Works. Oh, crumbs of brain slow this afternoon. So Stranded Dye Works. And I knitted a, a shawl, a two-coloured shawl. And this is one of the colours I chose, the Tammy Gore shawl. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And the pattern, pattern that I chose. No. Blue yarns. I think when I was speaking to you last time when we were having a conversation I was a little bit overwhelmed with sort of the amount of projects that I'd suddenly had on my needles I tend to just have two or three so a big one a pair of socks something easy and then perhaps something that's a little, that needs a little bit more thought you, you perhaps can't just watch the telly um, I think sometimes maybe you need to pick a project that is that perhaps fits in with what you'd like to achieve. I know it's my, I know it's my hobby, um, and I've got no in one respect I've got no time constraints, and in another respect, if I want to if I want to take part in something something like the Rainbow Chronicles, I would have to think about the patterns that I'm going to choose. So let me just put these on the slot block on the slot <laughs> on the sock blocker. Oh, I'm too tired. We had the boys yesterday, so I'm probably on a go slow. Oh, I just pulled it. On a, yeah, I just pulled it. Um, on a go slow today. I've already been. I've already been out. I've been visiting my friend today, and um, I gave her a scarf. The um, Penny Baker Peas Bottom um, shawl. I gave her that today as a belated birthday present. I didn't. We weren't able to meet up around a birthday. Well, I think she was away, so I don't think she appreciated me coming on holiday. Well, I don't think she'd have minded. Um, so I gave her that, and she was absolutely delighted. And it looked lovely. She absolutely loves it. So going back to these socks for the Rainbow Chronicles for August. So Stranded Dye Works. That's the yarn. I don't think I've have I told you the no, I haven't told you the colourway. And it's called Wash Your Hands. I think it was released last year. So this is Stash. So it's only a year old, so that's 2000, 2020. And the date is the 13th of August. Da -da! I have finished them. I have finished them. Oh my word. What a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful pattern and what beautiful beautiful yarn look at those and again funny funny enough they are a left and front um sock as well so beautiful so this was a pattern i'm not sure i'm not sure if this is the first pattern that shannon released but they are called walk the track walk the track socks and they are beautiful absolutely beautiful daddy's daddy's in it really quick and do you know what i think they still, they are really attractive and i kept knitting with them i kept showing them to my husband and like oh look at these don't you think they're lovely and he's like yeah 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 so, <laughs> so these aren't blocked so they're still a bit sort of crinkly um and we were having this conversation in the group about blocking your socks. I don't even block them because I've seen other podcasters showing you their block socks. So I thought, as you're on a podcast, that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Watch that be my uh, YouTube face. <laughs> so they were a delight, an absolute delight. And the bag that they are 
being housed in or have been housed in is my lovely bag that I bought from Lindsay at Stitch Create Love. And that's a beautiful, yeah, beautiful fairy bag. That was her first um, collection, I think, which came with lavender, a sniff, <laughs> and the little um, pouch. Yeah, I believe. In magic. So I'm sort of quite sorry to uh, see that I'd finished them. And I like having a pair of socks on the needles because most mornings I'll get up, I'll come in here, make myself a cup of tea, come in here, and I'll just pick up the socks and you know, do a little bit of knitting, as you do. So I thought, right, well, what do I do now? So I picked up a pattern and this is another thing how many of you have a pattern that you've knitted more than once or if you have like a go-to pattern what what is it um i want to knit a pair of socks as a donation to send to this nanny knits because she's supporting one of her viewers for the local um, NHS, the ambulance, ambulance drivers, I think, in the Midlands. I'd had a think um, last month when she had made this announcement that she wanted to do this. And if anybody wanted to knit along or to donate, or even perhaps just to make a sock tube to to send that, I thought, oh, it's great. And everything has to be in for the 1st of December. I thought, oh, I'll be able to knit three socks. And I was like, no, hold on, hold on. Guess you can knit three socks, but don't forget, you're already knitting for the Rainbow Sock Chronicles. So that's a pair. You have um, a pair of socks, those blue ones, which you haven't, you just got a hoe. I don't think they was even, that was a hoe, wasn't it? You need to finish those. Plus you've got your Christmas socks that you haven't even finished. So it's too much. Maybe there might be somebody out there that would appreciate just having a ball of yarn um, um, and being able to knit a pair of socks, being able to join in that way. So one pair from you is going to be more than enough. And if you're going to be able to make a donation, that will be better. So I was like, right, OK, I'm happy with that. I'd already decided that I was going to use this one. Of oh, That was clever, wasn't it? <laughs> Why did that round? I've got a feeling this is, oh, it's candy floss. Yes. So I was going to use uh, the West Yorkshire Spinners candy floss. So I needed a pattern and I thought what, what do I want to do? While I was happy knitting these as vanilla and I'm happy knitting my socks my husband in vanilla, I wanted something that was had a little bit of something to it. So I decided that I would use a pattern that I'd already um, used before but I want what I wanted was to practice my toe up. I always knit my socks toe down. No, I don't. I'm talking complete rubbish. <laughs> yeah, my socks are really great toe down. <laughs> I always knit my socks, or mainly, mainly knit my socks cuff down on DPNs. That's how I learned, and I just really like that. I find that quite easy to manipulate the needles. I struggle with magic loop. It's just I feel like I'm yanking the um, the cable. What do they say? Practice makes perfect. So I'm going to knit a pair of socks using Lindsay Tranter from Stitch Create Love using her carousel sock pattern. She's also, Lindsay's also donated this pattern as a free pattern, which you can get on Ravelry and you just need the code so let me just have a look here you need the code um socks socks for w socks for w m a s so it's socks for w m a s and I'll put it on the bottom here for you. And if you put that in, it should be, it should come up and you should have a free pattern. One of the many reasons that I like Lindsay's patterns is that I find them very comprehensive. You can either knit them 
cuff down or toe up. And I was very lucky to be asked to knit these socks earlier in the year. So I used these, I knitted these cuff down. These are my carousel socks. They're in an indie dyed yarn from Bird Street Yarn. I think this colourway is called Canoodle. But on the whole, I was very pleased with them. Apart from my heel, I was using the beautiful, using DPNs, the beautiful Knit Pro. But I think I was knitting them on 2.25. And as I was trying to do my decreases, I was just really worried when I was holding them. And I don't think I have particularly big hands, bulky hands, but that there was a bit of bend in them. I was worried that they were going to split or snap. And one of them did. Also, and I was like, oh my word, not only have I not been able to make a good job of these, these are actually a test knit, so that's not going to look very good either. And Lindsay was lovely when I spoke to her, and she said if I had also done a contrast heel, that would be better. Um, so I thought, right, I always wanted to go back and revisit, revisit this, and it's a perfect time. So two things that I want to be able to achieve um, with this project is I'm going to knit them toe up and I'm going to have I might, I'm not sure whether I'm going to do a contrast heel or not um, because I've just got the I've got this yarn but bear with me on that uh, I don't know so this morning I have sat there and on Liz, Lindsay's YouTube she has um, a few videos and she shows you how to um, to do a toe up pair of socks I think I did these for her. I did toe up when I did the bobble bee because as a t uh, when you're test knitting, you need to be able to, you need testers that know what they're doing. You need a mixture of test knitters, that's what I'm trying to say. And you need some test knitters that don't know what they're doing just to see if they can read the instructions and make sense of them. So I'm just trying to think how many toe up socks have, I have completed. It might be two. Ta -da! <laughs> so it's now three. Looks like the bottom half of a bikini. And I think, <laughs> I don't think that's too bad actually. I'm quite pleased with that. I think my muscle memory is certainly there now. I think my cable needs to be shorter. This is, I think, 80 centimetres. This is 80 centimetres. I think the reason the pattern is said 60. So that probably will be better. So that's as far as I am with those at the moment. The pattern is beautiful. Really beautiful. I love a good cable. It's like a mock cable. Yeah, lovely. Really lovely. So that's what I'm intending to knit now. I still have to knit those other ones, Christmas ones, but I'm on its own. They're only vanilla, so I can um, knit those on Zoom. Plus, I will have my. Um, then my Sept I've not completed my September socks. And then I'll have my October, November, and December. October and November socks to do. So these are going to be perhaps a slow, a slow burn. I would like to get those off middle of November and then they're done. Future future projects. I think at the moment I only have one project, one future project in mind. Um because Saturday is strictly strictly. I used to be like a huge fan and watch it religiously um, I think when it first started. I do tend to go off things if they're sort of if I feel they're re rehashed. Um, also, I was a great fan of um, Bruce Forsyth, who uh, sadly is no longer with us. But last year, I really got back into it, um, and I think it was really lovely to have something on the TV on Saturday night. And I think it really brought um, brought the country together. Yeah, you know, just gave us that little bit of um, entertainment that we we needed for that hour hour or so. 
So the lovely Ali from Little Drops of Wonderful is starting Strictly on Saturday. I have chosen a yarn out of my stash. I can't remember off the top of my head whether it's yarn that I bought this year or last year. Um, I've used this before, used this maker's yarn before and I love it. And it's Snuggly Stars yarn and it's a sock set and it's called Pretty in Pink. So this is what I'd like to use. What I'm not sure at the moment is, is what kind of pattern to make. I don't want anything to, well, I don't know. I could have something complicated because it's going on till, is it January? Or going on to December and then the winners are announced in January. So this is a, pro, a put up, a pick up and put down um, project. So what I was wondering was, would you be able to help me and suggest um, a favourite sock pattern that has either a different cuff, cuff and toes, heel cuff and toes, or different cuff, uh, heel, so I can use sort of this, this colour as well. And it is a 75% merino, 25% nylon, typical um, sock base. So look at that, and that just looks beautiful, doesn't it? She's so lovely of her colours, so beautiful. And this dyer was the very first dyer that I bought my um, very first skein of yarn and I was absolutely terrified. <laughs> Not when I went to see her or when I found her uh, at Yarndale, it was um, knowing what to do because I was kind of knitting with just DK in those days and I hadn't a four ply, was, it just seemed so thin to me. Um, how <laughs> times change. Um, it's the other way around now. The humble bee shawl was really, really thick compared to the four ply you know, that I've, I've been using. Um, and she was lovely. She gave me a lot of information. She took her time to explain things for me. I was terrified of using dye yarn in case. I don't know. Because, it's, because it is more expensive than commercial yarn, you just think, oh, I've got to get it right. That's another pressure, isn't it? But... Um, yeah, no, lovely. So yes, so if you have got a sock pattern that you can recommend, leave me a comment down below and um, I can look those up and then I can um, let you know I need to make a decision by um, Saturday. So that's my future plan, I think. Um, yeah, I want to crack onto that cardigan, so I don't want to, I don't want to put myself under pressure of having too many things. There's some things I would like to do, but yeah, I just need to crack on with this um, with this cardigan. So I think I might call this section baby knits, um, just in case it's not for all of you, um, which is absolutely fine. So for anybody that doesn't know that's new to the podcast or has missed it, we are expecting our fourth grandchild. We already have three. We have three boys and they're spread out nicely through the year, June, September and November. The fourth one is arriving, supposedly, <laughs> according to technology, um, the 24th of December, Christmas Eve. So we will, we will see um, when he decides to make his arrival. Plus he's going to be a boy. So we're having four boys. Yeah, we're going to have four boys. So it's hilarious. We're still not stop laughing. So we're in full baby mode at the moment. So they're coming at the weekend. So they live in Hampshire. So for, for them to come up, it is like a big deal. But we are pram shopping. Um, so I have um, knitted, decided to knit um, this little cardigan and the hat. And that is a uh, Serdar Snuggly pattern, um, 1815. Let's just see if I have the ball band. Yes. So this was in moustache, and this is 100 grams out moustache. Um, and that's that. And it's just a, it's just a cream. So this is a, yeah, this is a tip I got from, um, my first mother-in-law, um, she did a lot of baby knitting. She's absolutely superb, um, superb knitter. So it's in a cream and this is a little cardigan. 
that I've knitted. How cute is that? And look at those little buttons. His mum, that sounds really, really uh, strange to say that. It's her, her first baby, their, their very first baby. So my daughter-in-law, she loves stars. And I just, because it's cream, I just, I went to Black Sheep Walls and bought some, um, I bought some, a few, a few balls. Um, she likes mustard, that's her favourite colour. So of course it's going to have to have mustard. And I bought some buttons. Well, that was a long way around, long-winded. So I've got some stars and they're glittery. And this is, um, it's the size before naught to six months. So it should fit him or nearly fit him probably for about a month. But I think sometimes it's just nice to have one or two items that they sort of fill out quite soon. And she is very, very petite, um, is mum. So yeah, I'm hoping that she will like that. So that's that. So that's to keep it clean. Not that my house is dirty, so, but just so that it's, it is. So I thought, right, okay, I'm going to um, pass this on. So I did the rib last night, come downstairs, come down, come down this morning, set my cup of tea, and started um, knitting the hat. Wow. I obviously got that wrong, didn't I? <laughs> so this is Benjamin's. Uh, this is a boy's baby that they've all had. Yeah. So I have made a premature baby hat. So which is hilarious. Yeah, so we're there. So <laughs> that's the hat, um, which I don't think is going to fit him at all. And I think, oh, right, okay, it's... Like that. That's perfect. <laughs> so I'm going to have to cast cast on um, another one. Um, so I'm hoping to be able to gift that at the weekend. So that's a little something. Then we came up with um when fred was born he was born four years ago we were all together at easter and we were talking about what we were going to make him and everything and we come up with the idea that myself and my daughter knit my youngest one had sort of just and she just learned to or she wanted to learn to knit um and my mum was there and we decided that we would make a blanket if we all of us made knitted some squares we could put it together so we dished out the colors from my stash this is what I've made. So this was from Fred and he is our woolly baby and it's come back to me for a few repairs, as you can see there. So this is kind of the thing that we have done. What it is supposed to represent is that all the women have knitted something, knitted a colour and it's all our love in there. And then I think my daughter, she just, I knitted these bits between them so this down here, this across here, and this across here, and this across here, and then turned it round, and this is across. Um, so I did that. Let me start again. Sorry, <laughs> I did the horizontal stripes, those little ones, put each square together. And once I had a strip, then I did the vertical stripe. Obviously, missed it horizontally. Oh. <laughs> So, so yeah so that's the blanket and there's a few little holes in there so i will be working on that to repairing it and giving back to our alfred so we have been working on this and we come up the first problem was is your everybody's gauge is going to be different and that is part of the charm of the blanket which is fine but what we didn't realize is we need to make sure that we get the same size in the sense of I was knitting in inches and my daughter was knitting in metric. So while I have, while the length is fine, the width isn't. I was just, you can see that I'm just out slightly by two stitches. By two stitches. So we're all making yeah, a pile of these squares. 
So I will undo that and, and um, redo that. So we were using, we've decided to use um, Stylecraft Bambino and this colour here, this colour here is Little Boy Blue. So all the women have got their balls, all different balls, and then it'll come back to me. I'll put the squares together and then it'll go to my, my daughter. She'll crochet a border. And then I think it's his great gran. She can knit, but she's got arthritis, so she can't really. So we're going to put a hole on the border. So, something like this. Or some kind of hole or eyelet so that you can um, thread a ribbon through. So she is going to choose the colour. So it can be blue or white. So that will be her contribution. So she'll have been um, included in it as well. Um, yeah, so it's um, hard to not get excited about this uh, new little person that is um, going to be joining us. We've seen all the um, scan photographs. So um, yeah, lovely, lovely. Okay. So acquisitions, acquisitions. I had a package arrive yesterday and I must admit, I've, they've been coming a little while and it's the advent calendar from Green Lambkin Yarn. Um, this lady again, lovely, amazing dye, indie dye she is and on a small basis, but she runs an advent. But what she does is she, you can pay, I think it's £10 a month and you get three, I think you have a choice of 10 gram or 20 gram minis. So you get three of them a month and you can opt in, opt out um, until you have got enough. So I'm afraid I can show you, but I can't show you. So that's the envelope. <laughs> and um, they've come. I've used her yarn before and it's and it is lovely, really, really lovely. Um, she's got a really lovely podcast and she did a really lovely Vlogmas um, last year. That's when I became aware of her. So both my daughter and I, we are having these. And um, even if you get them for the next two or three months, that'd be enough, won't it? September, October, November, you better do 12, 12 days of Christmas. So I have the pressure of keeping hold of these and hide, well, hiding and remembering where they are. So, yeah. so we're, going to, we're going to do that. Um, so that's what we'll go over and have a look at Green Lampkin Yarn. So that's an acquisition that I have. Um, I've also been lucky enough, well, I've been lucky enough to go to Blue Fern, Blue Fern Black Sheet Walls. <laughs> Black sheet walls um, in the last few few weeks, two, maybe even three times. Yes, I think we went, my daughter and I, we went as a treat. We hadn't been for over a year. So we went, well, I went knowing that our son, her brother, was going to be having this baby, but I was under strict instructions, like not, not to tell. And I knew going to the wool shop straight away, as soon as she knew, she'd be said, oh, I could have bought some if you told me. So we had to go back like the, the following week once, once she knew. So I have bought, um, I'm not sure if I've shown you these, Dawn from Dawn's Days and Jeanette from Crafty Clegg have both used this cotton um, sock yarn from Regia. So I was kind of having sock envy. And yeah, that's what it's going to look like. So I quite like to knit a pair of those. But now I'm thinking I might have bought that the first time that I went there this year. Um, so that would have been, what is it, August, July? July? Yeah, July. So I have those. I've also bought this, this opal. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Really, really lovely. Again, I've used opal. That's the pattern that it'll make. Um, yeah, it's in, Ger it's in German. I don't know what that says. I'm not going to butcher to the language and then I bought another opal which you can see why we buy so much yarn it's because of the colours isn't it it's beautiful so again that's for a, um, a vanilla pair 
Then on one of my trips, this is what this is one I think I forgot to show you. This is a Rico. This is a sock yarn, and this is called Superba Vintage. Look at that. Let me hold the label around properly so you can see it. Look at those colours. So yeah, they are lovely. I really, really like that. So that's going to be a pair of socks as well, a pair of vanilla socks. Just when I've been working my way through a um, commercial sock yarn. And I'd like to say, well, no, I should say, I should say this is kind of an impulse purchase. But I'm going to blame it on, you know, those podcasters that you see and they say, oh, look at this. I've got this, I've got that. Um, Emma from Potter and Bloom, who influenced me last time I went, um, influenced me again. Look at this. But you'd have to forgive me on this, wouldn't you? This is the West Yorkshire Spinner's new Christmas colour. Look at that. Oh, and I've got a free pattern somewhere. It's obviously in a secret place. <laughs> so this is called Vintage Tinsel. Yes, kind of very quality street colours, isn't it? Yeah, when I, was, when I was a little girl, my nanny used to, the only time ever my granddad used to wash up was on Christmas Day. And my nanny used to leave all the men. She'd cook, she'd cook and then she'd they would sit down, have our dinner. And then after that, we would she would retire to the front room with the grandchildren with the tin of Quality Street. Remember those great big tins? And my nana's uh, favourite chocolate was the, the purple um with a caramel hazelnut but that's my favorite one too we'd sit down and watch the film the big films when they used to come on when you used to have to be ready <laughs> when these things started so yeah so i like that so i have those so they are impulse buys but kind of i have to have that one so i can be forgiven for that and then I bought um, for my daughter-in-law, she's having a baby shower in November, so I would also like to make some things for her. And one of the things I'd like to make is a pair of socks. And I think she had the second pair of socks that I ever made. So she would have had those at Christmas 2018. And when she was up, I must have been, yeah, I think I was, I think I was finishing these. Um, she said, oh, I've still got those socks. She said that you made me. I still have happy, lovely. I said, do you wear them thinking, oh, I want, I don't know how long, how many socks I should do. She does. So I thought, oh, how sweet was that, that she, um, not only does she like them, but that she still wears them <laughs> and that they've lasted. Um. So I thought, right, one of the things I can make her is a new pair of socks. And as a, you know, as a mum, a new mum, you kind of, you can get a bit forgotten, really. And I thought that would be a really nice um, gift for her. So I, I was chosen, I was drawn by colour. And this is a new yarn in the shop. And again, this is um, Rico Design. And look at this. That's the colour I was um, drawn to. Even I would like a colour, even I would like a pair of socks in that colour. Beautiful. Let me see. No, it doesn't have a colour number on it. But that's the code. And then I also saw these. And the grey. So I'm hoping that I could do the cuff in that colour and the rest of the sock in that colour. But I did buy this just in case the black. Normally I wouldn't have a problem putting the black with that. But I'm just thinking if she's having the baby, maybe she, that's too dark. So maybe she would like that. So there's a pair of socks. <laughs> See, this is how it all adds up, isn't it? Um, but yeah, I do really, really like those. So that's my yarn acquisition in the last um, few weeks. So not a lot, not a lot. <laughs> and then 
I have something a little bit different. Those of you that know me or those people that know me. Um, I love a book. love a book. Whether it's a um, reading book, you know, a novel or non-fiction or something to make. So I saw this was up um, and it's by Stuart Hillard. He was on the first series of um, Sombe. Lovely. So this is his book, Bag for Life, his latest book, Bag for Life. And there he is there. And I think he's on, um, I think he's on TV. I think he's on, is it Create and Craft? One of, one of those channels. And he's even slam a book. <laughs> Um, I bumped into him in, at, at Yando actually, I think the very first time. So I have a picture of the two of us somewhere. <laughs> um, yeah, being accosted, 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 accosted by all these strange women. I have been lucky enough to go on a workshop with him and he's lovely. He is as nice as he appears on, um, on the TV. So yeah, lovely. Very, very talented man. Very talented man. So there's lots of different projects in here. Oh, crumbs. Lots of different projects in here that I'd like to have a go at. There's bags to go in your trolley. So he's a he's a quilter. Um, yeah, a quilter. Look at that. I've been doing a lot of um, sewing um, the last few weeks as well. It's pro it calls them well produce bags. That's yeah. The vegetables. That one. Oh. Right, let me just start that again. Let me hold this up. This little um, knitting, knitting caddy bag. I really like the idea of this one. I might have had it right side. So lots and lots of different things in there. Really, really um, like that. So this is when your projects start to mount up, don't they? I'm always reluctant to reluctant to write a a list for my projects. I might write lists for everything else, but maybe that would be better. Let me just see. Just caught my eye. I have a subscription to um, Patchwork and Quilting. And in one of these, he's also, yeah, Stuart Hillard also writes. I don't think it's Patchwork and Quilting. He has a section in there where he's, where he's going to, where he has a column, has a column. Yeah. Now, Autumn's coming and one of the seasons in autumn is Halloween. I don't celebrate Halloween I because of religious reasons, but I love all the colours. I love I love harvest time. Um, that's what's important to me. One of the things I would like to make are some table runners. And like most most crafters, we never go around to half of the things that we like to see. And I open just opened this when it arrived the other day, and there is a little um Wall, wall quilt but I thought that would actually look quite nice as a table runner you could either have them all the same have have them different you could have perhaps one in the middle one color and these two that doesn't sit quite right with me I think I would have to have the middle different and these two different yeah or all or all the same but I do really like that um so that's pumpkin patch and that's by Amanda McCabe I don't um, know that lady that lady's name but I do actually like this whether I actually make it or not I don't know um I I've been making some project bags and I think I talk about that in the baby section 
which I think I'm going to include in this. I just cut it off my footage last time because it was, otherwise my video would be too long. So I think um, that's all my books. I don't know if any of you have seen the Harry Potter, the new Harry Potter book that's come out. There's a crochet one. Oh, my word, it's really lovely. My daughter has it. She was gifted it for her birthday by her brother-in-law. They are huge Harry Potter fans and he knows that she loves Harry Potter, um, as he does. And she, Laura's a, cre a keen crocheter and knitter and he's bought her the book. He hasn't earmarked anything, which um, I was surprised at, but the projects that there are beautiful. And I don't know who it's by, but it's it's the same person, I think, that did the knit book. Yeah, so that's well worth having a look at. Right. So this is the part of the podcast where I sit and uh, relax. And I'm, always, I'm always conscious of talking too much, so you'll have to let me know if um, if I do talk too much. I hope um, you've enjoyed sharing um, my crafty content this month. I'll be back before yeah before the end of September, and I'm in two minds whether to do Vlogmas and Vlogmas. I'm so far ahead of myself. Vlogmas. Is it Vlogmas in October? Vlog no Vlogtober. Vlogtober. I think I will I think I will do Vlogtober because for me it would be a good comparison as to how I was last year. I got quite frustrated and quite anxious with the editing. I think I'd only just started and I feel a lot more confident and I feel that I'm a lot more capable this year. I think it will still be the same format that it will be um, every two to three days rather than every day. For me, it's the uploading process. It just takes so long. Um, you have to forgive me if you can hear the dogs barking. I think they might have just come back from their walk or been back from their walk and their dad is up the scaffolding. My husband is currently painting the house and the dogs are absolutely fine with it until he goes up the scaffolding and if they can see him from the inside, they start barking. They haven't actually worked out that it's their dad that is up the scaffolding. Um, and especially if he's in black. They don't like anybody that's in black. So the milk tray man better not come to my house because they won't like him either. I don't know if you'll understand that that reference. That'd be funny if, if, if you do. So I hope these last few weeks have found you all well. Um, they found you safe. Let me know if you've been doing anything different. I think that is the topic of conversation nowadays um, of what you've what you have started trying to do. Are you going back to any clubs? Um, I think our quilting class is starting again. Um, I think it's the end of September, beginning of October. I have to go um, into another city to go to, to go to mine. And I'm in two, in two minds of whether to go, but it's once a fortnight. So I would really like to go and give it, yeah, give it another go. I miss, obviously miss my quilting, but that's not not the main factor that you go, is it? It's, it's mixing with other people. It's having that community. And I'm sure if anybody was standing outside our door, although it here is a room full of women, um, we don't have any... Any, any gentleman or any, anybody else it's, it's just like it's just ladies but you've never heard giggling or laughter so much um you can be busy working on on your projects and all of a sudden you'll you will just um put your head up or you'll start laughing not because you're in on a joke or anything but just it, because it's so infectious and it really does you know it does your soul good and it's always so lovely to we set a project and we go we go off and buy our material and whatever and then we go go to go to class and we can show our progress or we if somebody wants to learn how to do a different technique the tutor will um bring in a, a the demonstra demonstration so we all have to sit around around the table at, f at first we have our um, cup, of, cup of tea and she takes the register so just like being in school and 
all these women are, I don't know if I am the youngest or one of the youngest. I'm just like so giggly schoolgirls. <laughs> so yeah, that's good. So yeah, if you've been up, if you've been up to anything, um, let let me know. That would be nice. Um, yeah, let me know what you're what you're up to, um, what you're enjoying, what you're hoping that the autumn brings, or is there a different season? Do you prefer the summer or the spring or even the winter? Um, I haven't meant, well, I've mentioned in passing some um, podcasts. And I hope you'll go and have a look. Everything I've spoken about today, I'll put in my notes, which is down below. Um, just click on, click on the bar and everything will come up. And I think the podcast that I've watched, one yesterday, one today, called Mousy Makes. I have watched it before, but she's just released one on um, Solitude. And she is also dabbling in some stock motion. She's a really, really talented crafter. The Solitude, I've been thinking about that all day today. Um, she was very brave in the sense of, I assume she's married. She says she's, there's three of them in the house. And she decided a couple of years ago to go off and to have some solitude for, work for five days. I don't know whether I would do that. I sometimes like the idea of it. Um, but she used that to just escape the world. And I understand that. And I think a lot of us have taken that on board with being in our homes and being away from our norm. I think we've also been reflecting as well as to how our life was and how it could be and how we would like it to be. So really, really interesting. Um, I don't know if I've just mentioned that she's into stop motion. She's only just started. My word, she yeah, she's really talented. My daughter um, learned how to do that when she was at college, and it's a lot of work, a lot of work. But she's knitted these lovely gnomes, and she's been able to use the camera. And she's a bit like me in that she always likes to learn something new. Uh, we've been talking about this, my husband and I. He's doing a lot of work on the house. We're having a bit of a change around in the house and he knows that, yeah, a couple more months and he'll sort of be inside a bit more for the winter. So we're thinking of what we're going to do. So we're thinking of organising and cataloguing all our photographs. Don't worry, I'm not going to show you. <laughs> um, but I'm just wondering if, you know, what other hobbies we could perhaps take up. I like the idea of watercolours and drawing. Um, not that I'm, I'm not very good no, I'm not. I'm not good at them at all, at all. Even though I did art up until I left school, mine was more the screen printing, that kind, that kind of thing. So it'd be nice to, yeah, you know, maybe sort of pick a hobby. So anything you can suggest that maybe you think a couple could do. That be, that would be um, interesting to see what your suggestions are. Well, on that note, I'm going to love and leave you. So take care. Stay safe, look after yourself and keep crafting. So goodbye and I'll see you soon.